Good afternoon, everybody. It's lovely to look over a sea of souls. <laughs> and I know every one of you from a long time ago, not in this new identity or this new life. It's always a family reunion for me to come to these events. I'm seeing my family again from a long time ago. <laughs> it's wonderful, and I love each and every one of you. And thank you for coming to see me. Is it all set? <laughs> I'm echoing now. <laughs> yeah, I, I do want to thank you all for bringing me such love and, and helping me have strength because I wouldn't be able to be here if it wasn't for you. <laughs> thank you so much. And my lovely daughter, Toby, stand up to accompany me here, so it's possible. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, she agreed to come with me, and I was excited because I was afraid to come without someone. And it's nice that she came. And people were, were kind of curious anyway to see my daughter. <laughs> they read about her, but they, they didn't see her since she was a little kid. <laughs> Anyway, I always like to begin with a mantra that helps to balance and harmonize the body and clear it of all the energies and things you have collected on the way here or days before. It just, it's from the astral, it's called Kala, and we will do this six times and repeat it and set in silence until I said Baraka Basha to call you back. And this is harmonizing and helping you to concentrate and receive the information better, okay? So we take three deep breaths, sit with your feet together, hands clasped lightly on your lap, thumbs touching is better, and if your feet are together and your back is relatively straight, but not stiff, we don't want you to be uncomfortable. But set straight so the energy can flow from the earth up through the feet from that part of the body and through the head from above. So we want this energy to flow through the system. And we'll take three deep breaths and we'll repeat ka la six times, okay? We shall begin. Three deep breaths.
सकता है शांत है Thank you very much. Now the room feels better. <laughs> I like to do that every time because it's necessary for the human body to relax and to be able to concentrate on the information it receives and not the energy that it carried with it. Because we all have to live here and it's difficult sometimes. Especially now when Mercury's retrograde and everything's upside down and chaotic. <laughs> that's the human being, that's the physical world. And we have to live here, so we have to learn to do the best we can. Sometimes it's difficult because we, we get overwhelmed by the things going on around us, and we neglect to feed our inner self and to calm ourselves. We take everything, and it's too much stuff happening, and your body gets tense, you get nervous, you get frustrated. But remember, it's only an experience. And when it's over, then you reflect on it and say, well, what happened? What did I learn? <laughs> what happened here? But that's the way it is. Life is full of experiences. That's the whole purpose of the soul being. It only goes through every life time and life cycle as an experience for it. That's what the soul is all about. When the soul is created and sent into the lower worlds, it decided it would experience every possible experience that this world has to offer. And when you first came as soul, you began in the mineral state experiencing life in the mineral state. And there's thousands of adventures even in that life cycle. And you can't imagine that at the end of each cycle, each life experience, you leave the physical and choose your next opportunity and experience. Everything that happens to you, you choose before you enter into that life cycle. So everything that happens is something that you wanted to experience. So it's nobody's fault but yours. <laughs> <laughs> and, Are you talking to me? <laughs> and, and, you, and you have to use your imagination to understand how old the soul is. There is no estimate of years because in the mineral state alone, you have to live and serve a purpose before you can complete one life cycle. You serve a purpose in the mineral state, and then you advance to the next mineral state until you experience every possibility in mineral form. Think of it, crystals, salt, all the minerals that exist in food, in nourishment, in water, in stone form, everything. So you serve purposes and then you're free to go up and come back again. And then eventually you enter into the plant stage. And it's the same thing. You go through every possibility for beauty, your beautiful plants, your trees, you serve purposes, you build houses out of you, furniture, whatever. And eventually, you, you serve as nourishment for higher life forms. But whatever your purpose, once it's fulfilled, then you can continue your journey until you're a higher being. And you go through the animals the same way. And that's why I say to everybody, everything is possible. You can eat everything without feeling guilty because it's whole purpose is to serve the nourishment that you receive. Whether it's animal, whether it's plant, whether it's vegetable, once they serve their purpose through you, you're helping them to ascend to the higher stage as the soul. 
because soul is immortal, and once it's experienced something and served a purpose, it's free to continue its journey. And eventually, you reach a human state, and the human state is a bit more complicated <laughs> because you interact with other humans, you form emotional attachments and families and enemies, I and mean, you go through everything. So as a soul, and as a human being, you're the highest form level that the soul can uh, ascend to on this level, on the physical. And therefore, you are responsible for all the other life forms, mineral, animal, and plant. So you're the caretaker of these. And they serve the purpose of nourishment and caring for the things that are necessary for you to live. So you love them, you care for them, because after all, you were them before. <laughs> so now you understand them, and you can communicate and appreciate them. And God says, only be thankful for everything that serves a purpose for you. And that's the only thing. There is no guilt, no reason to feel bad about it. It is necessary. And the suffering and the problems that exist here are part of the experiences that help your soul to develop into the beautiful jewel that it is, you know. And the pain helps you to understand not to create pain for others. And it's a great deal and wonder when another soul volunteers to come into the world and serve a purpose to be a victim of, of you when you're in a negative state and you have to learn hard lessons like killing, murder. I mean, things happen. But on the other hand, it's all an experience. And God has taught the soul. You don't see it as bad or good. It's simply a valuable experience. And we have to love those that hurt us and appreciate them and remind them you're a soul. You're not the, these things that you do because that's important to remember. I am soul, this is an experience, it's nothing. And the other soul is a person and a human being with their soul first. And when you see that they hurt you, you realize that it's something that was necessary for them, even if they don't understand it. But if you can understand it, it helps them. And that's the whole purpose of why I try to teach people about being a soul and how important it is to know what you're about. Because it helps you understand from a higher level what is happening to you and in your life. And if you have disease or illness, it's something your soul chose to experience in its development on this earth. It's something you didn't experience before. So, And some souls simply have to go through the birth process and then they die and their soul is gone. And it's a horror for the parents and all that. But on the other hand, it was the choice that each soul made, the, the mother and the child. and. They will be together in another time when it's necessary that they go through a life cycle together. Everybody comes together. You're born in groups and you travel through various lives and situations and interact and you create a soul family with almost everyone you know. At one time or another, you have had relationships and interactions with these souls. And you usually can recognize them not in their appearance, but through the energy, the love. And love is the most wonderful energy that God gave us. And it's part of our soul. Because God is the source of energy in the center of creation. It's like the middle. And as you go outward and down, you cross over the different um, dimensions until you reach the physical. And the physical is the lowest level out from the center where the Creator exists. And the Creator realized it was this wonderful energy. And it said, oh, I have 
this wonderful energy. I have to create something out of this energy that will exist forever out of my love. And so it created all of the universes and dimensions and the souls. The souls are the most important because they embody all of creation. Water, plants, animals, and humans. Everything that exists is a soul in a, in a physical form. And even in non-physical form because souls experience in other dimensions as well. But when you, when you took your journey down from where the God world are and you came in down to the physical, you crossed the, the causal dimension and this is where you receive your first sheath and covering for the, for the soul because it has to be made of the same energy from that dimension to protect the soul. And so the soul can exist there and experience there. And you receive a certain chakra for this energy to flow into your, your body eventually. And this gives you the causal dimension. Energy gives you the ability to connect to the God worlds while you're on Earth and remember things before you came to Earth. It connects you to the Creator. And then you travel through the mental dimension and you collect energy there and this creates the mental body that is a form around the soul and this body helps you to think and create things. And this gives us the ability in the human form to receive this energy and information to help us invent and create things on Earth. And then you journey, you know, to the next dimension, which is the, uh, the causal. Oh, I forgot the etheric, I left that out. <laughs> the etheric was before the causal. The etheric is the dimension where the all masters and teachers of the spiritual world receive their information. And the causal dimension also retains all of the experiences that the soul has through every incarnation. So the soul has the ability to remember the experiences in other lifetimes. So all this is important when you come you know, on your journey as soul. This is part of the soul. The soul is in the center and surrounded by all these energy bodies from these different dimensions. And then you come to the astral, and the astral body provides you with emotions and feelings and helps to guide you through this full world, through these abilities and the energy from that dimension. So it's, you know, being human is complicated and wonderful. And then, finally, you arrive in the physical world which I already explained about. <laughs> and you know because you're here. But you realize that you're a soul, and this is only one of the bodies that helps you have a vehicle in which to exist here. Nothing else. That's it. That's what the body is. Just something to live in temporarily while you're here. And you experience what you can. And Remember, every time that you experience something, it's something you chose, or what do you And everything that happens has to be, or it wouldn't happen. Everything, everything that happens is meant to be, or it wouldn't exist, and believe it or not, every one of your collective consciousness and energy and thinking process creates what exists in this world. And that's why it's important to be careful about what you push your energy and attention on because you're giving it more energy and, and giving it strength. So remember that. <laughs> I try to make it easy. That was my whole purpose, to make everything understandable because 
some things don't use different terminology, you lose people. And I try to make it simple, like a little child could understand it. <laughs> because there's nothing worse than receiving information that you can't uh, assimilate because you don't really understand it. It's too complicated. And so I made it very simple in my books and everywhere. And made this information valuable and available for people because they need to know about soul and about being a human and your different chakras and doing the meditations and how you bring the energy in. You focus on the energy and the level that you want to attain something from and that helps you here in this world. Whether it's music, whether it's art or building something or whatever you're creating, this energy flows and helps you. And of course, experiences from previous lives is also valuable. And sometimes you bring talents with you from before that you were very attached to, to help you in your lifetime. Some children were, are born with musical abilities, artistic abilities. All this comes from other lifetimes and, they're, and they have a certain energy attachment to that certain level. And so it makes the world more, more beautiful, more wonderful. So remember to focus on what you want in this world and help to create the transformation in the world that we really like to help the money system, political system, dissolve so because we won't need it no more. We need a world where that, that we don't need money. We can use our abilities and exchange those abilities freely with one another and live in harmony and beauty. And that's what we want. So we have to focus on that. That's the only way it's gonna happen. It's you. You're the one that's important because you're the one that makes it happen. And when there's disasters, you know, always disasters, there's predictions of this and that's gonna happen at a certain time. And it never happens because there's too many souls focusing on, on the good outcome and, and balance and harmony and protecting the earth and keeping the hope. And so these things never happen. But when you hear about it, just say, oh, that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna make sure it don't. <laughs> Instead of focusing your attention on the fear of what's gonna happen, you gotta focus on the fact that it will not happen because we are going to make sure the earth is still here and beautiful and a place that we want after the transformation, the golden age. <laughs> That's what we want, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everybody agrees. There's nobody here that don't agree. So, you know, political, and these are traps. You get caught up in them, and they take all of your energy and your attention and you know it's a waste of your time because it doesn't do anything for nobody really it's power struggle and they've been going on since the beginning of time and we want to end this because it's not necessary we're not children we can control ourselves and look at ourselves and create our own environment and the rules and the things will be the spiritual rules of God and the Creator, and we won't need the rules and regulations of the government, of controllers and manipulators. So that's what we want. And we have to focus on this. It's very important. Even though, you know, I, I'm not worried about politics. I never voted because I never want to be responsible for whoever's in there. <laughs> and people say, aren't you patriotic? And I'll say, no, not really. I'm more interested in spirituality and love and life, but I'm not going to be involved in, in the power struggles that on this planet. I'm trying to get those dissolved so that we don't have them anymore. And I can't do that if I'm involved 
and supporting them with my energy. I mean, it may seem selfish, but that's the way it is. <laughs> I'm selfish then. <laughs> I'm virtually selfish. <laughs> But I believe in love. Love, to me, is the only thing that's important. Like the Beatles song, love is all there is. That's true. If you have love, you don't need nothing else. Because everyone needs to be accepted and loved. And they deserve to be. Every living entity deserves love and attention. And I talk to the plants, to the minerals, to everything, because I love everything, and I want it to know that and to feel that. So I, I walk around loving everything <laughs> because I was, I grew up that way. I used to pet butterflies. I, I could go up to them when they close their wings. You can pet them on the underside and not damage the powder that helps their wings supply their flight. And the butterflies knew that. And they loved the energy. And they would come to me and land on my finger and I could pet them. My daughter has so many stories of butterflies because she came one day from kindergarten and she was running home and she was crying, Mom, Mom, we had monarchs, you know, it was migrating and the temperature dropped and they all landed because they couldn't fly. And people were running over with bicycles and stepping on them. And my daughter was horrified. <laughs> and she came home, Mom! So we grabbed the pillowcase and run out the door and down the street. And I collected them when they closed their wings, gently dropped them in the pillowcase and carried this pillowcase with maybe 15 or 20 monarchs to the house. We cleared off a tabletop and dumped them all, all out. And then I said, well, now I have to feed them. So I got pieces of bread and soaked them in water and honey and spread them on the table in front of them. And they all went over and their little tongues came out and they nourished themselves. And it, it was the delight to watch for me as well as the children. And they stayed there and the next day the sun was out and they were all fluttering in the window, and we opened the window and watched them like a beautiful cloud as they all flew away. And we were so happy. <laughs> but we've done things like this, you know. This is what my children grew up with, because I always tried to do what I could, and I knew that I could communicate with these beings, with these little entities and souls, and that was important to communicate with the soul and say, hey, I can help you, I will help you. <laughs> and the love, them. see, it was love that made that happen. Because my daughter was horrified and she loved them and, and it was horrible for her to see other people that were unconscious even you know, enough to step on these poor little things. And people walk around in unconscious states like zombies, believe it or not. It's a, it's a level of consciousness that humans go through. It's just a normal state. But it happens a lot. And then when people get immersed into the negative energy, they become more so. Because then they, they lose the ability and the connection to the love and to the energy of the Creator. And those are the ones that need the most love. Because the more negative and the more difficult a person is, the more love they need. Because if you return the energy that they throw at you, you're not doing them any good. You've got to always send them love no matter what they send your way. And some of them are surprised that you're sending love to them. And you're like, wow, this is different. This person's not reacting like everybody else, and, you know. And it really works. It does, and it's important to try it. Believe me or not, it works. 
And it's important to understand the soul has chosen an experience, that's what they call it at this time. To exist in that state is not easy, but that's part of growing beautiful. And you know that all of you are different and will remain an individual throughout eternity. There's no two souls that are the same. You have different perspectives and different understandings and whatever you think, you don't have to disagree. You can be right from your own perspective. And you have to totally accept that it's okay that this person believes that way and you believe, just try to understand the other person's perspective instead of getting defensive and arguing. It's better to understand and then accept. It's okay if you believe that way, you know, it's all right and then try to understand what they mean. And if they can explain it to you, that helps too. So it helps you to grow and learn to have a different perception. Perception, you know, is uh, what reality is. <laughs> because if you think about it, this chair is solid, you know, it's material. But in reality, it's only a collection of energy vibrating at a certain level, if you understand that. But to a little insect, it's a big object. And for us, it's comfortable and small, and when we sit on it, it's a chair. And that it takes hours for a little insect to cover the whole circumference and area of this chair. It's just a different perception. And then, if you're a photon, you can pass right through this energy, this collection of energy. So that's a different perception too, but it's the same reality. It's a different perception, but it's the same thing. It's chair, <laughs> but because it's a different way of looking at it and existence, this world has many levels, even within the physical, that we're not aware of. You know, the microscopic world and the energy world is there, but you can't see it or feel it, but it's there. It's what creates the world that we live in. And on Venus, it's easy. We can, we have the ability to manifest everything with our thoughts, so we create it. Boom, there's a chair, and you design it the way you want it. And here on Earth, you do the same thing, but it's a process. You have to imagine it, because the imagination is the key to creation. Because without imagination, you couldn't create anything. You first have to visualize it, and then you gather the materials, and you create it as a reality. That's how everything came to exist in this world is people creating everything that's here with their imagination first and then the materials and creating as a reality. So see how wonderful we are <laughs> and how we are wonderful, powerful beings that we don't understand. We don't understand the power and the abilities that we do have, but you should because we can change the world and the way it is if we put our thoughts together and work together and focus on the same intention and do meditation and strengthen this ability and this visualization and imagination process, we can cause it to be reality. And that's what we want, right? So it's up to you. And remember, if anything disastrous happens and you hear about it, you can make the decision. And if it happens, then you made it happen because you put your energy in. But don't do that because it's not good. <laughs> I tell people, you decide. I heard this, but do I want it? No. Well, then don't think about it. Don't put your attention there because you're reinforcing it with your energy and you don't want to do that, right?
<laughs> I learned that when I was a child. They taught me on Venus, don't focus on things negative because you'll create them and you don't want this. You bring the energy into your environment and into what you're creating. So you have to focus on positive, good things to keep your house free of this energy. I used to tell people, if you're gonna have conflicts and disagreements, take it outside the house because I don't want that energy in my house, you know? And we, we wanna keep our environment positive and full of good energy and meditation a lot and love. That's important. So I always said, outside my house is the boundaries of all the conflicts and misunderstandings. <laughs> because if you can't do that, then I'd rather you not come to my house, take it outside. It's worse than smoking in the house. <laughs> it's the disagreements and negative energy. And you can keep it positive, you can work on it, but Make sure the people can be comfortable and feel welcome. Don't make them feel like they have to take off their shoes and dress a certain way and bring incense and all that. Make it as normal as possible. But anyway, we're gonna live best we can in this world. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's difficult after I had the stroke because I lost control of one side of my whole body for a long time. That was really horrifying. And for me, because I'd always been in good health and very balanced and quick to heal and temporary, I'd feel bad. But I could shake it off and gather my energy and get better. And when I had a stroke, I couldn't even accept the fact that I had one. And I wouldn't go to the hospital right away. I refused because I kept thinking, I'll get better. <laughs> and of course I didn't. And then I thought, well, I'm gonna go through a difficult experience. But it's something because I never wanted to ask for help from other people. I, I was independent, strong, healthy, and I worked hard all my life physically. I had great stamina and everything. And even though I inherited in my physical body really, really high blood pressure, I lived with it, my body functioned with it, and I was used to it. And so I was didn't even know it was high you know, until the doctors told me. It was 350 over. No, no, it was 250. Over, no, at one time it was 350. Oh, really? Yes, over. They were freaking out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All these doctors. Then they're, aren't you dizzy? Don't you feel bad? I said, no, I feel perfectly fine. Why are all of you so concerned? <laughs> and. I went through a whole series for a year going in different clinics to be studied by doctors because they were overwhelmed by my existence with such high blood pressure. But I had tremendous energy and stamina and when they started viewing blood pressure pills, all I did was sleep. And they lowered it, I, I couldn't function. And so they realized they can't bring it to the world. I can't function that way. They even put a catheter in my heart and they would seen that when the blood pressure go up, the valves would close off until the blood pressure went down. Everything functioned with the blood pressure. So my body, they thought was remarkable, but you know, I knew the already. <laughs> because the energy I brought here was from another dimension, which is a beautiful, powerful dimension. And I incorporated it into the physical body and got it manifested. And this body was in preparation for years. Before I ever came to Earth, I accompanied the little girl, Sheila, through the birth process. And as an astral being, I went through the birth process and received 
the genetical imprint from her so that when I eventually manifest the physical body, I would have the same genetics. So that was the whole plan. So it was a big process, a long time in the making. It wasn't just a snap decision, you know. It was something we had to consider spiritual laws, everything, before this took place. It wasn't something we could just do. It was something we had to consult with masters and understand what we're doing and why and get the okay for me to live in place of this little girl when her life was finished, to continue her life. And we had a karmic connection, which is in the book. It's explained, but, so when I received this genetical imprint, I also received the difficulties and problems that exist here. And my people, for a long time, like every five years, I would meet with them on the spaceship, and they would energize my body and give me boosters for the energy and protection for the diseases and all this stuff to protect me. And it was fine, but then we were consulting and they found out, the masters were saying, no, this is not good because Omnic can't experience what Sheila would have experienced if you protect her. And regenerize her, re-energize her body all the time. So they had discontinued them in my 50s. So, so then I was going to live completely without support except for emotional and mental guidance in this earth. And whatever happened to the body, I had to accept it and live with it. And so I knew eventually that I was going to encounter the difficulties that Sheila would have had. And I had to live with it because I, I made the decision when I came here. So I had to deal with it. And thank gosh, you know, I did get in, in Germany where I had this stroke. I had a neurological center where I lived for a long time and had therapy and very, they got me on my feet as soon as I could have the strength on one side to stand up. And they gave me a little wheelie car to push around. <laughs> and I had to walk. And they showed me how. And then I had every day to go out and sit down and eat with everybody. And they had people there who had um, multiple sclerosis, little crippled children in wheelchairs. We had to be fed. I mean, I seen all kinds of people in different conditions. And I was grateful that I just had one that was temporary. <laughs> but really, you learn to appreciate the difficulties people have when you experience it, really. And, you know, I was always a dancer. I always was active. I took long walks. And it was a nightmare for me to not be able to do those things anymore. But it's the way I am and I have to live with it. I'm slow, but one thing I insisted is that I would walk no matter how slow <laughs> or difficult because I didn't want to run around in a motorized chair. No. I wanted to use my limbs. And so I made the decision and, and hard as it was, to learn balance again, not to fall. I had to walk holding on to two walls down the hallway and up and down stairs practicing. And it was difficult. And I never gained control over my left hand and my leg never got back to normal. But that was my fault because I didn't go to the hospital right away. And they told me if you come right away, we could be give you an injection and and, and prevented a lot of the permanent damage that you have. And I had to learn to talk, and I was insecure about doing lectures or coming. And people encouraged me and gave me love and, and overlooked my speak, speaking problems and my abilities. There's no problem whatsoever. And I overcame it eventually, and here I am.
our beautiful looks and vitality as long as we want until we decide we're finished with this life. And here it's different. You have to accept what you get. Life is what you get, not what you want on earth. <laughs> so you have to deal with what you have. And that's it, right? right? And I appreciate all of you coming and being here. And I love you all so much. And every one of you are a perfect, unique soul. And that's what I see. I only see the beauty when I see you. And you have to realize every soul, every experience, every thing that you have experienced and felt throughout your thousands of incarnations have formed the facets of this beautiful jewel that is your soul. And that's what you are. So you're all unique and you're all beautiful. And one day I hope you can see it with your own eyes, the beauty of what you are and what we all are. <laughs> Just wondering how long ago was your stroke? Oh, it was uh, 2009. 2,900 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, in year 2009. <laughs> Hi, Seth. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, and thank, you. And thank you for being here tonight. Absolutely. So my question, you had mentioned about the animals. You know, there's a lot of talk about in order to kind of raise your elevation, um, you know, really tap into the higher vibrancies and um, raise your frequency that it's important to, you know, rule out the meat because there's so much negativity that's involved with the factory farming and whatnot. So you had mentioned at the beginning something about that, but as the animals pass through you, then you're also helping that purpose too. So I was just maybe wanting to elaborate a little more on that just because to get your perspective a little deeper on that. Oh, okay. Actually, you know, I know animals suffer, and there are human beings who are unconscious, are not conscious of that, are those who enjoy, for some bizarre reason, suffering of animals. But that's always been that way, because the animals have to have certain experiences, and the humans have to have their experiences and so they cooperate as souls together to make this happen. And it may seem cruel, but on the other hand, it's part of the experience. And we as humans have a way to uh, in, in, interrogate, take in the good stuff, the nourishment from the food, and our body can reject the stuff that's damaging or, or negative for our bodies. We can do that. We have that ability. So you can eat the meat as long as you're thankful for it and you bless it, then you're changing the energy. And so when you incorporate it into your body, it's not included in it as long as you bless the food and are thankful for it. But what happens before the food is on the table is part of the experience of whoever is processing or creating this. And that has nothing to do with you. So you can't stop eating and stop doing stuff out of your fear because fear is a tool used to control people. You know, they teach you that fear makes people obey rules and do things. It's a manipulation process on earth. So fear is one of the greatest tools that negative forces has 
to control man and manipulate man. So realize that fear is something that's not good for you whatsoever. But it's something you have to understand because it also helps you protect yourself. When you feel a certain energy and you feel this fear, it's your intuition out of experience. And that is valuable. But fear, you know, like in churches, organized religion, some of them want to control you and they teach you that if you do this, if you do that, you're sinning and that's bad. And if you do this and you do that, then you're going to go to hell, not heaven. And all this stuff, you know, is in your mind and you get confused and you really believe it. And that's the whole point. They're controlling you and manipulating you. And every religion is important because they're all past the spirituality. And to learning and realizing you gain all you can from this source, now you have to seek one that, that more suits your own uh, identity and personality, intelligence, and so on. And your consciousness will expand as you learn more and more from various teachings. But all teachings are good because they, they are incorporating the positive. And you need maybe that control in the beginning because you are a young soul and you have to go through these various religions and controlling factor until you learn individually, independently, to have your own control. So everything is good. It's not negative, it's not bad. It's just that you decide finally, that's not for me. I have to find something that fits what I believe or what I want to experience. Everything is what you want to experience. And that's what you choose, what you do. And reading and everything that you do influences you. But you must understand, you still choose what you want exactly. But I think there is no good or bad religion. Everything, I just don't like the organized religion so much because I don't believe I need it myself. And I, have my own teachings, and that's that's what I live. And everything I teach and everything I write about are from experiences either in this lifetime or before. I've been existing as soul in this lifetime over 350 of your earth years, and one incarnation. So it's a long time for you, for me. <laughs> So I'm an old, old lady. <laughs> yeah, really. I spent such a joy listening to Hello. you. Um, so I was wanting to get your perspective. I read that uh, the Ancient of Days had brought, for, brought down um, several thousand people, volunteers essentially from Venus as part of the 144,000 that's mentioned in the Bible. Is that... Is that your perspective of that? And oh, there's many of us here, yeah. And from various planets who are teaching mankind on various levels, and they're all doing their part. Most of them stay for a short while, incorporating themselves into society, working at a certain level, maybe in the banking process, or who knows what, but they give their influence to help eventually where that we won't need this anymore. So that when we go away from money, that we can incorporate a way to live without it. You know, they all serve a different purpose. And they stay for a short period of time, but when they walk, come here in their bodies, they can't live in this environment very long because they can't adapt to it because they're from a higher consciousness and understanding and energy and their whole societies are different. So it's a temporary existence here, but they do exist. Is that, is that coming, sorry. Is that coming in the form of walk-ins or are you saying they live a short time oh, for the whole birth process? Well, the ones who come directly are the ones who have the most difficulty. Walk-ins have their own problems because 
they incorporate some of the consciousness and concepts of the, the previous human. And so there's a little difficulty there, trying to adjust, you know, through all this consciousness. So walk-ins is, is a difficult process. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Since no one's standing here, I'll take in one more question, which is, so I'm curious how the Venusians do they, do they look at Earth as like, a, oh man, I gotta go do that. It's like a bad vacation, or does it not? We think it's a wonderful opportunity because you're like children to us. You know, you're at the state of consciousness and you're eager to, to become higher beings. Not all of you, but some of you. So it's a, it's a place for various experiences. And we appreciate the opportunity to have these experiences. I enjoy wine and stuff here that we don't have there. <laughs> on the astral, we don't have these kind of things. So on Earth, I can experience the wonders of the physical experiences of eating, of drinking wine, of having my cigarette, or whatever. <laughs> and I say, you know, Experience what you wish as long as it doesn't harm no one else. And if it doesn't harm you, and you can control it. But be careful because there are chemical drugs and stuff that are dangerous. And those you don't know exactly what the effect will be. But everything, I don't believe in judging anybody. I, I appreciate and respect you. You make your choices, I, I'll go along with you. Thank <laughs> you. That's what I feel. Robert, this is Raven Keller. I know. Hello, Raven. <laughs> Hello. The hug I got with you was so wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. We were so cute with our little canes. <laughs> <laughs> Walking toward one another. And then letting, letting go of the canes and holding each other for balance. <laughs> And we had the most wonderful one. <laughs> it was one of my best. Well, I, I don't think that they realize that the uh, gravity of Venus is only 81% that of the Earth. So uh, in our last incarnations, we're bound to have a few uh, a few problems such as this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, uh, but uh, I just wanted to commend you uh, for all of your work. You've been a great and a marvelous inspiration to me, and uh, you've proven that uh, the Tibetan monk Milrepa was so correct when uh, when he taught us that it's far better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. So, cosmic blessings to you uh, forever. Oh, thank you. That was lovely. <laughs> They're experiences that are valuable for someone, even though it's it's terrible. And there is a psychological fascination with understanding how people come to be this way. But part of it is it's a karmic experience that they chose. And so sometimes the situation of how they grew up had nothing to do with it. Because some people grow up with terrible things happening and become the most loving, compassionate people. And others, 
become very destructive and very cruel. So you never know. It all is, it, I think it's a combination of the love and support you receive, plus the karmic relationship to your parents and situation and what you've chosen to experience. But it's okay for us to be like advocating for oh. against the cruelty of animals. Yeah, because you, you're helping man's consciousness to develop. And it's fine if you want to be involved in, in these projects to benefit and help mankind and the world because that's what we're here for. We're here to support and put our love into these situations. And when you put your love and attention in these situations, you're healing the earth and these people. And it's not keeping that negative vibration no. on this. Okay. As long as you so. put your love in it, you know, send your loving energy and do what you can physically to help them. Right. Okay. Then you're, I'm all for it. Okay. Help, help okay. everybody, however you can. Yeah. That, thank you, that answers my question. Thank, thank you. you so much. Your book was very important to me. Oh, um, I know that. I've seen you and talked to you and I, I've seen it in your eyes, honey. And Wendell Stevens was the one when I went to him and I didn't know who he was. It was very early and I said, what book should I start with? I don't know where to start. And he said, here, this one. And um, I'm remembering how I loved reading about Venus because I wanted to know about a place where there was not the kind of suffering that is here. And a place where there is no more war and there is no more illness and there is no more poverty. And I just. I just love just absorbing that. It's one of the things I talk about now is we have so much to learn about these other cultures. But what I remember was that Venus also <coughs> lived in a time where there were very controlling factions on the planet. Exactly. And I, I'm remembering that what you said was that at some point the Venusians just got sick of it and they all just walked away from the cities and went out into the country. And so the, those, those ones that were controlling and being kind of predatory, they didn't, were no longer able to support themselves in the way that they had, and so they came to Earth. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to ask you, how do we, are, are we there, and how do we begin to, do we walk out into the, the country? How do we no, bring about this No, it's coming. I told you, the transformation process is part of it, and we're working on it. Venusians, uh, Saturnians, the Martians, everyone, and the hierarchy of uh, ascended masters and the masters, spiritual masters, angels, every soul is working on the transformation process to make it easy for people of Earth. There will be a period of time where there is a lot of destruction because the Earth has to go through a cleansing process. There are those souls whose consciousness can't accept the transformation because they're so attached to things the way they are. And uh, especially money, the money process. So a lot of them will commit suicide at the time. You know, when, when the money system collapses, the political system collapses, there will be uh, all kinds of people making, you know, all these appearances and rejecting everything and fights and problems, you know, demonstrations will happen. But this is the period we have to go through and our earth has to go through because these souls have to leave the earth violently or whatever they do to be recycled with a new consciousness to accept and to be able to give their energy and support for the new system. So it will happen, but it's not gonna be an easy process. It's gonna be rough at first, but as long as you meditate and send your love and you understand what's happening, you'll make it through it and be fine. And you create little communities that are supporting of each other in, in this process. And you form these societies and communities by having meditation groups meeting together discussing esoteric things understanding what's happening making preparations so that 
you have enough food, water, everything you'll need because eventually even the technology won't work. Our people will come and dismantle all the nuclear things and problems and <laughs> introduce the new technology and help you gain the consciousness because the new technology, you need the consciousness to be able to handle it and not misuse it. So this, this is what we're for. The higher beings will come to the earth and be your support system. I've written mine. It's in the book. I'm going to pass it on. Okay, thank you, honey. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, the question I have is, uh, how was your consciousness, astral body, uh, transferred into this body? Um, there is a temple on the astral Venus that is located under a protective dome on a part of physical Venus that is under the climatic dome for protection. And it exists on the physical and the astral level. And there is a certain temple that we go into when we make the decision to come here and live in the physical world. Then we know that once we manifest the physical body, we can't go back to the astral except in the astral body. But then we go through a meditation process of the support of all of our fellow Venusians and certain mantras and spiritual ceremonies are involved and then you go through the process and you manifest the physical body and then you're on the surface of Venus and you walk to a physical ship and begin your journey in the physical. <laughs> That's how it happens. Mom, okay, it take it. years though? Yes. Yeah. It's, not, not a, it's not a slow process. Like I said, there was preparation for years before, so I received the genetic code and information on Earth by accompanying a soul. But if you manifest a Venusian body, it's a simpler process. But it's more difficult to live in the physical Venusian body. You have to live in a certain location on Earth for a day preparing you little by little by lowering your vibration. You go to a temple that's located on a higher vibration and they help you through the process. It's hard process. And, but if, if it's necessary, it'll happen. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Is that Rex? Yes, the city of Rex. Hello. Ah, it's such a privilege to be here with you. It's a privilege oh, to be here with you. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to ask about the healing temples on Venus, and if you could talk a little bit about their purpose and how many there are and what takes place in those temples. Um, yes, we, we have quite a bit. And we have a certain level for healing traumatized souls from Earth when they die in trauma. And we take the soul and it's put into like, like a little basket in a certain location and it's healed and is brought into a, the place where it's ready to, to be a human again. But it's, you no, know, we rescue a lot of people. We have soul people who come to Earth in disaster locations and rescue a lot of souls who don't know they're even dead. Right. You know, because they went through such trauma. Right. And they, they just feel lost in the situation. They don't know they're dead yet. We've got to convince them that they no longer live on this planet. They have to go somewhere else. And we take them with us. So it's a whole process, really. It's another whole book that we read. I've written some about it, of course. My uncle passed away in the Vietnam War in 1970 and was um, earthbound for a few years and then went on into the higher realms. And I had a channeling session with someone several years back and he came through and talked about how him, himself, and some other soldiers went on up into 
to the light, and I'm sure that you know there was a period of time there where they were in the healing temples or the the wards. I'm wards. sure. Yeah. Yeah. We have special healing crystals that uh, that channel energy into the bodies and into the souls because we don't want the traumatic experience to damage the soul. It damages the bodies, but when the soul is free of the body, we want to make sure it's totally healed before it re-enters. Because the soul trauma is something we can't live with, really, as human. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so honey. much. Appreciate it. Okay. What, what is the common population on Venus and is it something that's physically viewable from this dimension? No. Oh. <laughs> no, the population varies because each individual when they enter the Venusian society, they choose how long they will stay. And when they leave, they go through a ceremony like a graduation ceremony to raise their vibrations and lift them to the next dimension. It's, it's a whole process. It's in my book, uh, uh, I forgot what it's called now. It's, it, there is a book that explores all of the rituals and understanding. It's in the, in the trilogy book. It's a certain chapter, it's all about Venusian rituals and experiences and things like that. So that everything is in there. Sorry, last question. Um, <laughs> so, and I'm sure more people than myself are curious about this. So you, you had these experiences, and it may be in a book, I'm sorry, I haven't read your books yet. But when you come to Earth and live in this 3D life, what are your most favorite experiences that you can only experience as a human that you don't experience on Venus? So you mentioned drinking alcohol um, and a certain and food. Eating food, yeah. Uh, what about, uh, sorry to be inappropriate, sex, uh, <laughs> other aspects, is it the same? And what about falling in love, is that? Well, you know what, it's the same feeling. Uh, we, we get this feeling on Venus, even though we, we physically don't incorporate the exchange of energy in the same way, we can send the energy. And it's the same energy that you have in the orgasm. You feel it, but you can freely send it to one another, together in one room, or embrace it if you wish, whatever. But it's a whole different, and when you have a child, a man and a woman decide they're going to create a family. Then they do a special love ceremony and they call another soul to join their family unit that has a connection to them. And the soul comes and joins them while they're embracing and enters the mother's womb and grows there to a certain age. And then it decides when it's ready to be individually independent. So it's a different process. It's not a birth process, it's a different process. But I explain it, like I said, in my book, the trilogy is in that in a certain chapter. And so like, if, what would be your short list of, these are the things I experienced here that I just are so special from the earth experience. Is there anything that comes Giving on? birth to my children. Giving birth, yeah. Yes. It was, it was the most, beautiful experience I ever had. And having a little soul come and grow in my body and its physical body to form and me to hold it and speak to it and do mantras with it. You know, it's, it's the most wonderful thing in the world. Being a mother was one of the greatest experiences. And I, I love that to this day. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? I've got to remind people that simply wisdom and love is available at my table over right there, and I will autograph people's books that they uh, had before at the same time and take photos with people. <laughs> and I hope I get to hug 
each and every one of you. God gave me my way of exchanging soul energy. Thank you. Thank you.